Hey, you ever want to play your favorite anime character in a tabletop RPG and the system would, you know, kind of let you do it, but not really? Well, then you should play Worlds of Myth. Welcome to MythTube, where we build your favorite anime characters in Worlds of Myth. What is Worlds of Myth, you may ask? Well, Myth is a tabletop RPG that I designed to allow you to build the over-the-top characters you only find in shonen battle anime. Characters like Naruto, Deku, Meliodas, and Ken Kaneki are all examples of characters this game can easily let you build. The game is in late beta right now, so you can head on over to worldsofmyth.net and download a free PDF, and you can also download a variety of other supplements. Or... Yeah, for free. My goal is to spread awareness of the game before its official launch, and I want as many of you as possible to have fun playing it. You can also head on over to our Discord at Sinister Jester Worlds of Myth, where you can talk all things about the game, find a group to play with, or check out some of the other games we're testing. But without further ado, let's talk about who we're building today. So today we're building Salt Terrain Aldrake or Sally from Peach Boy Riverside. So first off, I'm not expecting to get a whole lot of views on this video, like at all. But the reason why I'm making this video is not so I can get a lot of views, it's because I really, really, really want to push people to watch this show. Like, this show should have done great but instead it really kind of flopped. The basic premise is our girl Sally longs for adventure and winds up developing a huge crush on the fanboy Mikoto here. Like, I don't know if the guy's playing for the team you want him to play for Sally, but good luck all the same. The European fantasy continent where the story takes place is now infested by these demons called ogres or oni which seem to have migrated from Japan. Mikoto is on a journey to kill them all Eren Jaeger style and because Sally hesitates to follow him after he saves her kingdom by massacring a small army single-handedly, she winds up going on a journey to find him. Along the way, she makes friends with a former Oni and beast folk and decides to fight for the peaceful coexistence of humans and non-humans. And that's the basic premise. So like the show had everything it needed to succeed. The animation was stunning, the conflict with the Oni was interesting, the world was fairly cool, and the characters were good. Nothing to write home about, but they were fun. I mean, Carrot and Frau had the best designs in my opinion, and Sally, the main character, has a body made for hentai. I mean, look at those things! Look at them! Like, look at how they just somehow keep their perfectly round shape as they majestically float in place. Not today, Gravity! But yeah, point is, I was really, really excited for this show when I first saw the trailers, and when I started watching the series, it was engaging enough to become another respectable shonen battle anime. Except for one giant flaw. Some jackass at the studio came up with the brilliant idea of airing the episodes out of order. And like, I don't mean that in like a, oh hey, they show you the ending and then you piece together beginning and the middle in an artistic and interesting way where they show you pieces and clues and make it super satisfying, no. No, no, this isn't lost. No, it's just straight up out of order. And you know it's out of order because the story beats just don't line up. Like, in one episode, you'll see a guy's entire town get wiped off the face of the map by a bad guy, and the next episode, there are two towns in the future, and the dude's totally fine. Like, no grieving or anything. They'll also reference past favors that said dude called in to get them to the town like the audience is supposed to already know what they're talking about. And if you reorganize the first season so that it matches the chapters in the actual manga, everything makes sense. The story was written to be told in a certain order. None of this had to happen. When they released it, it's like they just scrambled the episodes and picked them out at random and said, here we go, it's week three, and we're gonna give them episode seven. The only explanation I can come up with for this in my head canon is some git looked at the anime and was like, you know, Americans just have no attention span, so we gotta start off with a bang. Just get them right into the action so we hold their interest. And uh, yeah, we'll scramble the entire series as well so that 
that they constantly are trying to figure out what the hell is going on. That'll keep them coming back. Either that or some dude just had it out for the show and didn't want it to succeed. Either way, fire whoever had that idea. Cause I'm pretty sure that the Japanese version actually did air in order. The episode that was supposed to be the actual first episode was interesting all by itself. It had action, world building, character introduction, and gave you questions to answer. It had all the pieces it needed to bring us back for round two. But whatever. Despite the problems I laid out, I would still recommend that you give the show a watch because it's cool. It's got ogres and witches and beast folk and sword fighting and magic. It's a fun watch. Just make sure you watch the episodes in the following order if you want it to make any sense. That's episodes 4, 1, 2, 7, 11, 12, 5, 6, 3, 8, 10, and 9. And with that long rant out of the way, let's get into our character build for today. So Sally is a human princess with a phobia for octopus, cause of course she does. <laughs> But she has a mysterious power called Peach Eyes. How did she get these powers? We don't know. But whenever she's near an ogre, they activate. One of her eyes starts glowing and gets a peach symbol inside of it. And then she is granted incredible power. She becomes outrageously strong, gains some pretty sweet fighting skills, and seems to have a resistance or even immunity to some ogre powers. Well, in this activated state, her personality also changes, becoming a psychopath driven only by the urge to kill ogres. Later on in the series, however, she starts to gain some control over the form and is able to keep these impulses somewhat in check. Other than that, she's got some training in using her knife as a weapon, can punch a hole in a tree the size of a building, and seems to have a purifying effect against ogres. So what level do we build her as? Well, in Worlds of Myth there are six tiers of power, and since this is a new anime, I'm just gonna have to do my bestest to guess how these tiers would correlate to the Peach Boy universe. Tier 1, or levels 1 through 5, is for like foot soldiers or even human warriors that have skills but don't have any special abilities. Tier 2 or level 6 through 10 is probably where I'd put most of your unnamed ogres, creatures who would be too difficult for a regular human to combat but lacking the true power of higher tier foes. I'd also place former ogres here like Carrot or Milia who still maintain part of their power but aren't nearly as strong as they used to be. And finally in this tier is where I'd put powerful beasts folk like Frau before she got her demon power up. Tier 3 or levels 11 through 15 is where I'd put your high ogres, creatures like Set, Moki, Yaki, or that giant tree monster who had the power to threaten an entire city by themselves. Tier 4 is for your truly powerful, like Ju Salino, who could create summonings capable of wiping an entire city out with a single blast, or Sumeragi, who could casually kill other high ogres and seems resistant to peach eye powers. Tier 5 is for the legendary characters powerful enough to go down in history books. I'd probably put Nobrega here, as he was called an Oni God. I'd also put Mikoto and the first peach boy Hiko in this tier as well. And then I I don't really have anyone else for tier 6 yet, but 6 is reserved for baddies so powerful you usually have to wade through an entire series just to get to them. And they represent threats so huge that multiple nations have to bend together just to defeat them. Sally has easily defeated several ogres that I would consider third tier, and though her powers are specifically designed to take down ogres, I still think it's fair to place her at the bottom of fourth tier. So we will be building her as a level 16 character. Starting off with our level 1 stats, we'll go with the classic shonen protagonist spread of 4 speed, 4 power, 4 skill, 1 cunning, and 4 heart. Sally's earnest, but a bit naive. For your race, you are human, but you're human with magical eyes. That means that we are going to build you as a Norome. This is a beta race and is subject to change, but it is the race that I designed specifically for like the magic eye ninja trope, so it'll work best here for Sally. Level 1 Norome get an extra upgrade point and 3 gene slots. 
they also get the first of their signature abilities, Eyes of Seeing. This doesn't really fit Sally, but it's cool, so I'll mention it anyway. These allow you to look at an opponent's character sheet up to three times a day. It doesn't cost you any myth or actions, you can just declare you are doing it, and the GM has to hand the player the enemy character sheet for them to study for up to one minute in real life time. It's a super cool and super useful ability for players, but probably a hated ability for many future GMs. Next, you get your next iconic ability, Magical Eyes. This grants you an eye gene that does not cost you any upgrade points or fill a gene slot. Norome will periodically get more Magical Eyes by this effect, but if they choose to spend a gene slot to grab a Magical Eye gene early, they have the option of refunding the upgrade points and the gene slot later. There are currently 15 eyes to choose from, but we're gonna go with Hunter's Eyes. These eyes give you plus one speed, power, and skill along with access to ocular mancy. They also allow you to choose a race or family. Families are like subcategories for races. We'll go with the race Oni because those are Japanese ogres. You can see ribbons of light leading you to your chosen prey within 10 miles of you. And the ribbons get more vibrant once you are within one mile of them, and again once you are within 100 feet of them. Can Sally do this? No, not really. But Mikoto, who has the same eyes as her, seems to have a weird sixth sense for finding ogres, so she might develop this kind of power later. But we're mostly here because this gene will grant us some bonus damage against Oni later. For spell schools, on top of Ocular Mancy from your eyes, you get Hypnomancy, Vitamancy, Hexmancy, Familiarmancy, two elemental spell schools of choice. We'll go with Pyromancy because you're so passionate, and Aromancy because you are longing for freedom. You also get a spiritual spell school of choice. We'll go with Holy Mancy. You give off strong Goody Two Shoes vibes. For talents, Nora may get investigation slash perception level one. This gives you a plus five to rolls searching a room, researching a subject, or noticing small details. It makes you Sherlock, basically. You also get stealth level one, which gives you plus three to sneaking rolls and sneak attacks. And then finally, you get an upgrade point toward a talent of choice. We'll go with Silver Tongue Level 1. This will give you plus 3 to cunning rolls used to try and convince others to see your way, and the talk no jutsu is strong with this chick. For your kit, the first thing we are gonna pick up is Transformation Level 1. I was tempted to go with Alter Ego here since she does kinda lose control in this form at the beginning of the show, but that aspect can also be covered by player roleplay and base form Sally is really useless so the transformation is better at representing that. Transformation comes with the spell Special Transformation Level 2, which costs you 2 actions and 30 myth to cast, but provides you with plus 3 to all of your stats and 10 customization points, which can be spent like upgrade points that you can only have access to while in this form. The gene also comes with a bunch of customization options that you can spend your points on as well, some of which add penalties to the transformation in exchange for more customization points. So the first thing we are going to pick up is mundane form. Which is weird. Mundane form gives us like a plain old ordinary weak human form and changes our actual character sheet plus the transformation bonuses into like a Sailor Moon form. So this makes it so we can walk around as weak little Sally until we need to go beast mode on an ogre and then transform into an OP monster. That's pretty much the Ichigo build all over again. For our human form, we're just gonna give her 3 speed, 2 power, 2 skill, 1 cunning, and 6 heart. This form has no abilities from your character sheet other than your talents and doesn't progress. So, if you get killed before you can activate your transformation, you're kinda screwed. But, since we are essentially just gonna be building the special transformation form from here on out, our customization points are essentially upgrade points. And our stats and stat caps essentially go up by plus 3. This means that our stats cap at 18 instead of at 15. Next, you are freakishly strong while in this form, so we'll pick up special power. 
this customization will add another plus one power and plus one power stat cap. We'll then go ahead and grab the gene power enhancement level three. This gene will give us plus five power and plus two to our power stat cap, meaning our power now caps at 21. We'll also get Magical Might, which is one of our customization options that grants us a stack of Overcharge. And then lastly, we'll grab Spirit Attack so that we can use said Overcharge on just normal attacks. Overcharge stacks are really powerful and something that you usually only get starting at level 6 in tier 2. They recharge at the beginning and end of your turn, meaning you get to use up to all of them on your turn and can use up to all of them defensively as well during the rest of the round. Overcharge stacks can be spent to do a lot of things. Almost every spell has an overcharge effect to it. But the effect we want it for with Spirit Attack is that you can just spend the stack in 10 Myth in order to give plus 1 offense plus 20 damage to your standard attacks. This also works with techniques and other non-magical attacks. Or at least attacks that are usually not magical. So use this for your tree exploding punches. Next, we are going to skip all the way to the end of tier 3, just like Sally does in the actual show. Pretty much by episode 2 or 3, you are already beating down high-ranking ogres like Set once your eyes awaken. By this level, you'll get plus 70 HP, plus 140 myth, 2 stacks of overcharge, 76 plus 9 upgrade points from Noromei bonuses, and plus 14 stats. We'll put four of those into speed, one into power, four into skill, and five into heart. From being a Noromei, we'll also get another three iGene levels. Unlike other genes, magical iGenes require a gene slot every level, but provide a much larger number of bonuses and compensation. Any race can pick them up, but the Noromei race can use them the most efficiently, because they are literally a part of one of their abilities. We'll go ahead and grab Hunter Eyes level 3, that'll give us another plus 2 speed, power, and skill. This will also give our weapons plus 2 offense, plus 2 defense, plus 10 damage, and plus 3 protection when fighting Oni. It's a great damage buff and a mini immunity to ogre attacks. We'll also use our last remaining gene level from Magical Eyes and our two remaining gene slots in order to grab Eyes of Power level 3. This will grant us a spell by the same name that allows us to spend a passive action and 40 myth in order to get plus 6 to all of our stats until the end of combat. You can use this a number of times per day equal to your overcharge stacks. So pretty much the Sally combo is when there is an ogre around, spend your entire turn casting special transformation to go into your overpowered form, and then cast Eyes of Power to make your form even more overpowered and just wreck whatever is in front of you. But right now we just have stats and we need some attacks to actually use them. So we'll grab small blade level 5 for some dagger skills and then up our cunning with improved cunning level 6 so that we can grab monk level 5. If we use our monk weapon to block we can just kind of flavor it as stopping a giant fist with our hand. Next our peach powers are supposed to give us like evil cleansing properties so what if tree exploding punch were more than just a punch? What if it were a smite? So we'll grab smite level 5. This is a powerful melee spell attack with a base damage of 24, but it can't damage holy type characters, only neutral and dark types. Next, we need to be impervious to ogre attacks, so how about we pick up the Vitamancy spell Life Force Armor level 5. Whenever you would take damage from an attack, you may spend 12 myth in order to add an amount of protection or damage mitigation to your character for the duration of the attack. This protection is equal to your heart stat plus 3. You can spend 10 myth and an overcharge stack in order to increase this by an extra plus 10 per stack. Next, we'll continue to get more invulnerable with grit level 2. This gives you plus 10 armor if you are wearing armor or plus 10 protection if you're not wearing armor. Sally doesn't, so we're getting plus 10 protection. 
The only caveat to this growth is that you lose the bonus it provides if you have an armor spell active, which Life Force Armor technically doesn't count as one. We'll also grab Durable Level 5, this will give us plus 50 HP. Then, let's give you some more damage with Super Strength and Combat Specialist. Together, these two growths will give your melee attacks plus 25 damage, and whenever you need to make a power success roll, like, you know, to say break out of the tree branches around you or some chick's magical hair, you get plus 10 to that roll. We'll also get two-handed fighting style level 2, whether it's a blade or a punch, Sally seems to only attack with one weapon at a time. This will give our weapon attacks plus 2 offense, plus 2 defense, plus 8 damage, so long as we are only wielding one weapon at a time. And then we'll get the techniques focused attack level 1 and power attack level 3. These two techniques can stack with our sword, monk, or even smite attacks, and we'll take two actions to pull off, but together grant us minus 2 offense but plus 15 damage and a pushback effect that causes the enemy to fly backwards a number of feet equal to how much HP they lost rounded down to the nearest 5. Next we'll get us some more myth with spiritual level 5 and wisdom level 3. Together these will grant us 110 myth. After that, since our cunning and speed are both at least 10, we'll pick up godly speed and efficient, which will give us an extra action each turn. And then we're running out of things to buy, so how about we just grab survival level 1. This will let you select a type of terrain, we'll go with forest, and you get plus 5 to rolls involving hunting, tracking, finding shelter, and similar camping type stuff while in your chosen terrain. We'll also grab intimidation slash rage level 1, you are a scurry psychopathic lady when you go into peach mode. This will give you plus 5 to rolls to intimidate people. And then we'll upgrade silver tongue to level 2 which will in turn up our talk no jutsu rolls from plus 3 to plus 5s. Finally, we are going to finish this tier off by jacking up our stats with improved speed level 4, improved power level 5, improved skill level 4, and improved heart level 6. And then we get to level 16. This is the level where I'd put Sally at when she punched out Tree Coon. At this level you get plus 5 HP, plus 10 myth, plus 1 stack of overcharge, 5 upgrade points, the epic status, meaning we can pick up stuff with the epic tag in their cost, plus 5 to all of our stat caps, and 1 stat point. We will spend our one glorious stat point and put it into, well, you guessed it, power. Cause as I've mentioned before, she is really strong. As for what we're gonna pick up in this tier, this level is really easy. With a heart stat of 10 or higher and epic status, we're gonna grab Overflowing Spirit, which will grant us another plus one stack of overcharge. That means with five stacks, we could potentially add plus five offense, plus 100 damage to a single attack. And that's the build. So how did we do? Well, Myth Sally did get a few bells and whistles that the show Sally didn't have. But that's just kind of what happens when you're going off of a race template. You may get stuff that you don't necessarily need or even want. We also didn't get her defense against Oni as freakishly powerful as I want but that's because the game doesn't have a ton of specific resistances that are that niche. And the other options to improve Sally's armor score would have been way out of character. But what we did get her was a freakish superpower stat coupled with nutty damage from her high overcharge stacks and holy damage which pretty much every Oni will be weak against. And of course, her only specific damage, which will add yet another plus 10. Her other stats in general are pretty powerful and get even more overpowered when Eyes of Power are active, adding another plus 6 to all of her stats. 
And even if we didn't get the full-on immunity we wanted, she is extremely tanky with a huge pool of HP, a natural damage mitigation of 10 to 13, and a life force armor that can mitigate another 21 to 77 damage. That means that if she chooses to use all of her stuff, the Oni would have to deal over 90 damage just to scratch her. And that's pretty good. If you liked this video, please give me a like, subscribe, and most of all, share it as it really does help me to make content both on and off YouTube. And though I am still paying my dues to the YouTube algorithm as of the airing of this video, I really would like it if this episode brought in at least a few more viewers of this show. As always, go to our Facebook or Discord groups if you want to find a group to play with. And with that, my beautiful weebs, peace.